Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about that how can you unstack rows which are stacked in one single column, two separate columns. Take a look at the problem that I have here. I have a name of the person, Cecilia, and then I have her city, I have her age, and I have her phone number. There is one uh, row missing, like a null value here, like a blank row here, and then the next record starts, and the same four things repeat, the name, the city, the age, and the phone number. And then we have a blank again, and the next record starts. So every single record is consisting of four different columns, the name, the city, the age, and the phone number. So how do I kind of take this data, which is stacked in one single column, column and bring it like this. So name, city, age, and phone number. So let's just take a look. I have already built the query. I'm just going to show you the results of that. It's really, really simple. So I'm just going to maybe open up the query that I have here. All right. So you can see that this data has been loaded into Power Query. The first thing that I do is get rid of the null values because I know that every groups of four needs to be created into columns. So I don't need the null. I already know that number. So I'm just going to get rid of the null value. Once I kind of get rid of the null value, I'm going to start counting that how many rows are these. Create an index column, which is very simple. You can go to the Add Columns tab and create an index column. And I start to create an index column right from zero up till the end of data. Now, once I have created the index column, I kind of use the index column to create a remainder column if I divide it by four. Why do I divide it by four? Because I need to create four columns for every single record. So here is a trick that I do. I pick up this column and I divide this column by four. I'm not interested in the quotient. I'm actually interested in the remainder. And that is nothing but my modulo column. If you don't know how to create a modulo column, let me explain to you. So you click on the index column. You go to the add columns tab. You click on standard calculations and you click on mod. And it's going to ask you, hey, you'd like to divide this particular number by and I'll say four. And this is the column that gets created. Now, if you take a look at this column, this column has great importance. Why? Because if you take a look, zero is getting the repeated here. So zero here and zero here and then zero here and zero here. If you take a look at all the values against the number zero, they are nothing but the first column of the data, which is the name. So Cecilia, if you take a look at all the ones here, they are all second column of the name, which is New York. Number two is the third column, which is actually age, so on and so forth. So I have actually created like a column identifier, right? Now the next thing that I want to do is after I've created the column identifier, I'd like to create a row identifier. So what I do is I take the index column and I subtract the modulo column from that. So index minus modulo is nothing but subtraction. So that's, that's what I get. Now you can see that I get zero all across, four all across, eight all across. The actual number here doesn't matter, but you can see that zero is repeated throughout. That means this is actually the first row of the data. All of these four values will form the first row. All of these four values will form the second row. All of these four values will form the third row. So whatever number you have, that number should be repeated again. And that is the record of the data. Now, once I have the column identifier and the row identifier, I actually don't need the index column. It was just for support and I can just get rid of that. So that column is gone. And once I have this kind of structure where I have the actual data, the column and the row identifier, I'm going to apply a pivot table structure right inside my power query. So what do I do? I select the modulo column. I go to the transform tab and I apply the pivot table, which is right here, pivot column. So once you actually click on pivot column, this is what is going to open up. So let me just show it to you. So it says that you selected the modulo column, which was nothing but the column identifier, which had 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And I am good to create columns with 0, 1, 2, and 3. And it has already created that. Now, what do you want it in the values section of the pivot table? So in the values section of the pivot table, I actually want the actual values, which was the records that I had, the data that I had. So column one actually goes in the value section of the pivot table. Rest everything which is remaining, which is this column, which was the row identifier, automatically comes into rows because we don't have an option for rows here. So it's just two options. What do you want to put into columns? What do you want to put it into the values? And rest everything goes into the rows. Now, there's one another interesting thing that you have to do is that in the advanced option, you have to make sure that you click on don't aggregate. So I don't really want to aggregate any kind of text that's going to give me incorrect results. So that's what I do. And I say, OK, and that's the data that I have. Now, you can see Cecilia is the first row and Iris is the second row. Joanne is the third row and Peter is the first row. That's absolutely correct. We have the city, the age, and the phone number. I can just clean this up. Maybe I can just get rid of the subtraction column first. I can also rename 0, 1, 2, and 3 to their relevant names. So name, city, age, and the phone number. 
in case you would like to apply any data type settings or convert that into a text and date and all that kind of stuff you can do that and that's about it i can click on home and close and load and this is all good now let's say for example if another record gets added so i copy that and i add another record and of course i have to kind of leave a row here and i just write my name here and i stay in gurgaon 34 and I'm not gonna write my phone number so i just maybe come here and hit a refresh that is what i have beautiful all right that's how you kind of solve this problem where you kind of take the stack data and unstack that in multiple columns uh, let me know if you have any questions around this i'd be glad to help thanks so much for watching this and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye